Good evening, my friend. Welcome to WW Radio Live on YouTube. If you're watching for the very first time, thank you so very much for being here. Please let me know where you're watching from. And if you're watching on the replay, don't forget to subscribe, turn on all notifications and join us here every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And then also you never know when and from where I might be going live again. I may or may not be speaking about tomorrow, possibly from a park. We'll see. Um, so thank you very much for being here. Thank you for maybe knowing unknowingly being part of our ongoing uh, YouTube experiment as we're sort of uh, experimenting with not just posting more videos on YouTube, but doing the live shows on YouTube as well. Um, and like I said, if this is your very first time watching, please let me know where you are, where you are watching from. I see there's Maine, there's Pittsburgh, Brooklyn in the house, Oklahoma City. Uh, CB Girl is from somewhere in California, and I thought I saw somebody was actually watching from the parks. Uh, so again, thank you very much for being here, and please do me a favor, <clears throat> please share this out and invite somebody to join with us. Um, tonight, I thought we would talk a little bit about, where's my passport? Not Well, I'm going to need that passport too. Uh, this passport, the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival, and you might want to get your passports ready because we're going to talk about Japan as well. So, um, sorry this week's show, by the way, is a little late. Um, it was supposed to be out last week. My guests had to cancel. It was supposed to be on Monday. Had to move it to Tuesday. I had, like, a ton of appointments yesterday. Couldn't get the show out. Uh, it should be live in your feed tonight, and I'll post it up on the site as soon as we're done tonight. Spinning a lot of plates all at once. I will never, ever complain about being busy or tired. It is, uh, it is all good. And this week, I have an interview with not one but two of the magic makers from Epcot. Uh, we have the proprietor of the Epcot festivals, and yes, we will determine what a proprietor actually does, because it sounds like a term from like the 1860s, and we have the chef de cuisine uh, who's gonna talk about creating and designing the menus for the festival, the challenges that come with the festival, and this wonderful coordinated ballet between a lot of cast members and disciplines and whatnot in order to make the festival which I think this year may be the most beautiful, possibly the most delicious festival. And I know I have recency bias, but I've been a few times and I have been really, really, really enjoying what uh, the festival has to offer, especially including, but not limited to, the impossible items. Uh, there's, without a doubt, more impossible uh, uh, meat-free items on the menu at a number of kiosks. And I'm ordering them because, one, I'm trying to eat everything new and possibly everything at the festival. Um, and I've been wildly surprised. I've posted a couple of uh, short-form reels and stories. I'm trying to finish editing another one uh, to get up that, that I tried something from Brunch Cot the other day. It sounds like it shouldn't taste good, but it's fantastic. Spoiler alert, it's fantastic. Like, I would order these things not because I'm trying to eat meatless. I would be ordering them because like they taste so good. And that just shows you this evolution of the menus and the flavor profiles that continues to improve year over year. Um, you know, early on, the sort of the impossible stuff was a little bit of a novelty. I've actually tried the impossible and the beyond. I like the impossible a lot more. And it's not even just sort of the um, beef substitutes because you may or may not know that Japan is my favorite pavilion in World Showcase. It's my favorite place to visit. It's my favorite place to eat. And year over year, the festival food is is remarkably good. This year they have a, I'll see if I can find it quickly in the guide. They have a, um, a steam bun with vegetables and plant-based soy meat. If you didn't tell me, it looks, it smells, it tastes, it has the texture of chicken it's delicious. So, like, not only do you not miss the meat, <laughs> but I actually find myself not even knowing the difference. And I think that's a testament to, again, the chefs and the flavor profiles and the cat that is trying to claw his way out. Just keep clawing at the door. Eventually, it will open. Um, the ramen on the cup brought me back to the 90s. So, Raphael's talking about... Um, they have a, a, well, I have it actually open. It is a um, 
a ramen salad shaken in a cup with fresh vegetables, grilled chicken, and a dashi broth with chili oil and yuzu. So there's a little bit of the citrus and a little bit of sweet. Again, I posted it on my YouTube shorts, on my Instagram stories, and on my, sorry, my Instagram reels. And I think I probably posted it in my um, my Facebook stories as well. But then again, the algorithm being what it is, you probably haven't seen it anyway. That's a different subject for a different day. Sue Passauer from Mouse Fan Travel says the food offering of Flower and Garden this year are awesome. Off, awesome, not all awesome, awful. I agree a thousand percent. I may or may not have to go back. To, I have a meeting tomorrow. I think it's going to have to take place at, um, uh, at Epcot. And I may or might not have to assemble. Somebody says, mention a cat, show a cat. Is that like how the rule goes? Where are you, cat? Well, she's gone. I don't, there's not a lot of places for the cat to hide, and yet she's found it. Who knows? She'll, she'll pop out uh, again. But I love the fact that year over year, there you are, that year over the year, come here, come here. They want to see you. They don't want to see me. Psst. Well, fine, be shy. Uh, year over the year, the menus continue to impress. Uh, the ramen in the cup is an easy eat. Uh, Kenneth, I agree with you. Not only is it an easy eat, uh, it's fun. It's like it's you, you shake it in the cup. It's chilled, uh, which is lovely on, yes, it's it's not technically spring, but in Florida, it's already summer. Um, it, it's a really, really nice sort of refreshing meal as well. Maybe I'll have to get another one tomorrow just because. Um, Lakota Matson, I am not on, on pure principle alone. I cannot read your comment that hi from Philly. I am still sad and mad. Yes, a, little, a, a lot bitter about Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles, but that has nothing to do with Disney and it doesn't. Kitty, come here. Psst. Come here. Come on. Come on. What? Now you're being shy. You're camera shy. Well, whatever. Come here. Well, fine. Anywho, um, you, Tater, it is nice to see you. Uh, she'll come up when she's she's ready. She's probably thinking that I'm going to grab her and kick her out, but uh, so be it. So anyway, I will have the interview with uh, the chefs and stuff tonight. And if there's something that you, let's do it this way. Wait, even better. If there's something from the festival that I haven't reviewed yet in one of my videos that you'd like me to go tomorrow and shoot a little dare I say Disney in a minute, maybe, whatever. You'd like me to shoot a short video and do a review. Uh, I am, a, I'm a giver and I will do that for you. So Bethann is actually watching from the Epcot at the UK Pavilion at the Toy Soldier. Uh, Bethann, it's probably, well, it's definitely too late now. If you have not done the Epcot Twinings Tea Tour, go back tomorrow and sign up early. Sign up as soon as the pavilion opens at 11 o'clock. It's one of my favorite and very much overlooked experiences at this festival. Year over year, it continues to get better. And there's a little, first of all, the tour is free. And you get a free surprise at the end. Lakota Matson, I've never actually kicked somebody out of a chat before, but the Go Birds is just, it's, it's pouring like Tabasco sauce in a very, very fresh very, uh, a very deep wound. Where did you go, Kitty? Let's see. Come here. There you are. Oh, you were hiding in the books. Oh, yeah. So I have two kitty cats. This is Jasmine. You can guess what the other's name is. Look, say hi. Look right there. Right there. See? Hi. She's a mush. She is an absolute mushy cat. She just wants to be hugged. There you go. Is that better? So, uh, Vero Mike's, I can't pull your comment up because I'm out of hand, says the lobster, uh, Vero Mike's, and I talked to the chefs about this. I, when I saw a chilled warm water lobster tail on the menu for, I think it was 1150, 1175, to say that I was skeptical is a bit of an understatement. To say that I was, well, you'll have to wait. The video will probably come out tomorrow. I am editing like a crazy person. I only have so much time and so much time, but I'm trying to get it. Um, so uh, your dog is barking at the screen, says Kenneth. Are you falling asleep? Is that what this is all about? She's very, 
She's very needy and just wants to, yeah, she is, but she's so very sweet. I love this kitty cat. So, and Aladdin, Aladdin sort of has to, you can hug Aladdin when he feels like it, but she's the alpha. So <laughs> Becky says he's talking about food. We'll be distracted. No, I will not be distracted for hours. Um, but I do want to know, maybe actually post it because I'll probably miss it here. Um, if somebody could link over to the clubhouse on Facebook, post over in the clubhouse. If there's anything specific you'd like me to go and try and review tomorrow, and I will do a short video review for you. I have two more in the can that I'm going to, two or three more, and I'll try, I have a meeting tomorrow morning, but I'll try and see if I can get um, some time to do it. Uh, Aladdin is not in the room. I, Jasmine was sort of hiding in here when I shut the door. So uh, when we get to see Aladdin, probably not tonight. What are you looking at? Hmm? Okay, go ahead. Don't go clawing at the door because I'm, I can't get up to, to let you out. So you have to just chill and be happy. Uh, Amy says, love the topiaries, <clears throat> excuse me, and the butterfly house, uh, first flower. Oh, here, let me fix this for you. The first flower and garden for me was around 2016. I planned my trip around the, um, the butterfly garden. I've been to a couple times this year. It has, since she's been a little girl, it has been my daughter's favorite. She could spend hours in there. And she's like the butterfly whispers because for some reason they just come out and land on, on her when she is there. Oh, that's right. You can't post links on YouTube. Well, it's www.com slash clubhouse. And that's where I will. Uh, <laughs> the cat is reading the whiteboard. <laughs> Mike DeCutis. Does Becky hate cats along with kids? No, she definitely hates kids, but she has cats. So she loves cats more than children is maybe what you could say. I'm not saying that, but um, I know she has at least two, three cats. Something like that. I don't know. And I think they're, they're, they're Disney name, right? Or is it like Boma and Boma, Jiko? And there's one more. Simba, Nala, Raja, Mufasa, Scar. I don't know. It's She has definitely Disney named cats. So Amy says, help Blue hit the thumbs up. Yeah, if, I'm still getting used to the whole <clears throat> YouTube thing. And I don't want to be that guy. Subscribe, t click the bell. Turn, but I need to sort of put a little animation on the bottom. Please subscribe and click the bell. And Somebody give me a thumbs down. That's rude. <laughs> Why did I get the thumbs down? What did I do to warrant a thumbs This is Now it'll bother me. Like, what did I say to warrant a thumbs down? Or are just people on the internet not nice? Impossible. Everybody on the internet is kind and friendly. And they follow the choose the good mentality Without, without a doubt. Uh, Karen says, my cat is named Flurkin. That you just made Becky Mankin uh, very, very happy, by the way. So, uh, yeah. So if there's something that you want me to, to cover from Flower, Flower and Guard, otherwise, uh, check your podcast player. Today's, Monday's episode should have downloaded today because I just got it uh, recorded and finished and produced. And then I'll get the show notes and whatnot up after um, the show is over. There's also some news that I'm sharing there that you may have seen in the clubhouse. Oh, speaking of news, um, if you're local in the area, and uh, as long as we're, uh, whoever said it, you're right. We're going to talk about food one more time. Uh, I am actually going on Tuesday to a food event I am so very excited about. Uh, if you've ever watched Food Network, and you have ever seen uh, Chef Manit Chawan. Uh, she is the owner. She is the founder. She is the creator of Eat in Disney Springs. Uh, she has a very special meal opportunity coming up on March 19th, April 15th, May 13th, June 27th, and July 22nd, I believe, is the last day. Let me just get... Hold on a second. Let me just get the... Um, exact details of what is included in this meal. She's actually going to be there and wait, 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 wait. Um, 
So she is a James Beard Award winning chef. She's a star of multiple Food Network shows. And at Eats, it is going to be a celebration of flavor and community. Champagne welcome, two cocktails or mocktails paired perfectly with a not one, not two, not three, but a five course family style menu. Look how excited I get. Uh, autographed merchandise and you're gonna have an opportunity to meet the chef. She's gonna be doing live cooking demonstrations there as well. Uh, tickets are on sale now if you go over into the clubhouse at www.com slash clubhouse. You can find them there. Um, I am actually going on this Monday. Uh, tickets are $195. It is obviously a very limited event. I don't know how many tickets are there, but if you're planning on going, I look forward to seeing you there. And uh, and I have not, so you, Tater, I have not been to eat yet. It has been on my list. It's been on my radar. Um, actually, I want my first experience there to, I wanted, I should say, my first experience there to be a live dining review. It will now be the second <coughs> uh, time because I am going to go on Tuesday. I'll share, most prob most likely I'll share um, sort of real time on my Instagram stories and I'll try and record some video to share as well. So um, Sue says, I wish I was going to be there attend that. Love watch. I really like her. And she actually... I posted it on my Instagram stories and then she sent me a DM. Um, we just chat a little bit on DM. So I'm looking forward to meeting her in person. Uh, Raphael says, my God, did Disney miss the boat on not having an India pavilion? Rachel, this is one of the ones that comes up year over year. And we've talked about this on the show too, in terms of our wish list for what we'd like to see in terms of pavilions, certainly from, a culinary perspective, and I think from a cultural perspective, and especially because there's such a dominant Indian pop population here in the States and, and throughout the world, I think it just makes a lot of sense. I think there's great learning opportunities. Indian food here in the States has become much, much more mainstream. There's actually an amazing Indian restaurant in Windermere, just north of Magic Kingdom. If you ever want to venture off property, it's called Non Stop, which I love, N-A-A-M, N-A-A-N, Stop. The staff is amazing. The food is delicious. If you like it spicy, there's so what they do, they say, how spicy do you want it? And I'm like, well, what's, they say, well, between one to five, one is like a little spicy. Five is like super spicy. And then there's like, they said, there's also Indian spicy. Like if you think five is as hot as it gets, like, I think you have to sign a waiver to get Indian spicy. Two is about the max I can go. And I'm still like, like you get the mouth sweats because it's so hot, but I know some folks like to, uh, they like, they want to make sure like their face is just red and on fire when they're eating. I like to actually taste the food underneath and I don't like to, um, I don't like to make it too, too hot. So uh, I love Indian food, but no one that I traveled to do. So Kimberly, one of the things I've heard about eat is that it's a E E T is it's a very, very accessible menu, meaning, and I think this is why it fits well in world and specifically in springs is if you're not an adventurous eater, or if you are, and you have some folks that aren't, there are sort of baby steps on the menu, uh, especially because it's sort of like a create your own in certain things. So I think you'll, you'll have the opportunity to, to spice it up if you want, but also to very much temper that and get non bread with dips that are, like Sana, like a much, much lower, more easily approachable and accessible menu. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to checking out what they have in store on Monday. I have my, I literally have my stretchy pants picked out. I mean, they all look exactly the same, but I really have the ones picked out specifically for Monday. So, but yeah, I've never seen anybody actually order the Indian spicy at nonstop. Like I want to see it just to see what happens. And then the EMTs have to come in to, to rescue whoever um, orders it. So, but I love, uh, I love trying new foods. Um, I, I was at the dentist this morning and had a conversation with the hygienist uh, who's from the Philippines. We were talking about, I, I spoke in the Philippines a number of years ago, really got a chance to try a number of different Filipino foods. And the only thing that I would not eat was balut. And uh, I don't want to sort of go down the balut path because it's certainly not for everyone. Uh, so you may want to like put this on mute for a second. So balut 
is a partially fertilized chicken egg. So when you bite into it, there's multiple textures and you might see sort of, right. Um, and I just didn't even bother. I saw some people who did not respond well to it who were there. And she's like, yeah, I used to eat it all the time, but I would only eat this part, not this part. And I'm like, listen, I, I, we need to stop this conversation because your hands are in my mouth and I'm not feeling well the more you describe it. So um, somebody did mention doing another review. I actually ate um, on Monday night. I ate at a restaurant that I haven't been to in probably 10 years, 12 years, certainly not since it's been refurbished. Um, and it was a spectacular, spectacular meal from beginning to end. And we did a live dining review because the person that won one of our Dream Team auctions in January during the marathon weekend, who was incredibly generous, I'm not going to spoil where we went, um, her choice of sort of the... Um, I don't remember if she won the co-host for the day or or the live dining review. What all? That's what she picked. I think it was co-host for the day, but that's what she picked. She wanted to do. She wanted to go and eat at this restaurant, and we were there for three and a half hours, like three and a half hours. We were eating the entire time, but not eating, not consuming the entire time. It was lovely. It was lovely, lovely, lovely. So, but um, yeah, you a know, couple of weeks that'll be. Um, and it was not Flying Fish, you tater. Who, by the way, speaking of YouTube channels that you should go and check out and subscribe to, go to youtube.com slash you tater, T-A-T-E-R. Well, I dig the stuff that you're doing there, brother. So, and thank you for being here. Maureen, I am an adventurous eater. I, 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 I used to say I'll try anything once. Now I say I try anything once, but there's a little asterisk next to it because there is a limit to what I will try and when and why. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm also, I think I'm starting to fight something too. Uh, yeah, I could not do the food challenges on Survivor. Like, don't give me bugs. Don't give me that kind of nonsense. Like, just give me normal human. I, I'll eat anything. Here, I'll qualify it. I'll even eat anything that is on the menu at the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. But all that being said, um, speaking of eating, speaking of adventure or adventures, speaking of learning about a culture through their food, do I have an opportunity for you? I do, as a matter of fact. If you, you may or may not have heard the news uh, about what we are planning and I am super excited to share and talk about it with you tonight. I will tell you in advance, this has been in the works and conversations have been happening, happening about this. It, it is actually not an exaggeration to say for nearly six years. Because six years ago in 2019 is the very first time we took an Adventures by Disney to Japan. It was a WW Radio group trip. It was only members of the WW Radio family brought to you by our friends over at Mouse Fan Travel. And as the trip, I think, was actually going on, Becky and I were already talking about, when can we do this again? World shuts down, blah, 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 blah. Over the last few years, the conversation has turned more to reality, and it's been a matter of timing, right? There's been a lot of other events and things that have been going on, when can we do this again? We know when we're going to do it again, ish. Asterisk, one more time, because we are, I get very joyful when I, when I talk about this, we are in fact going back to Japan. We are planning another adventure in 2025. This time we're going, oh wait, this, is, this graphic is totally, there you go. Uh, we are spending nine days in 10 nights in Kyoto, the peaceful temples and the gardens and the bamboo forests, Tokyo, uh, Takayama, uh, Hiroshima. We're still working on the exact dates for 2025. It is going to be in May or in June. I have more information 
and an interest form at www.radio.com slash japan25. In fact, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. If I can click. Come on now. Wait. <laughs> Come on, my jello. Hold on. I swear I've done this before. There we go. In 2025. So if you go to www.radio.com slash um, japan25, you get more information about the trip, including some of the details. Uh, again, we have an interest. We're, we're gathering an interest form now. Filling out the form does not necessarily get, guarantee you a seat or commit you to anything. Right, You're not locked in, but you do sort of secure your place in line. When we do have that date finalized and figured out, we are going to go to the people on the interest list first. I will tell you that in the past... All of these trips, without fail, have sold out. Um, Becky, correct me if I'm wrong. When we did when we did the China trip, I think the China trip sold out in like 32, 34 minutes, something like that. Um, I'm expecting, especially because we have such a lead time, that this trip as well is also going to sell out. We tried to give you as much information that is possible right now, including what's included, what's not included. We gave approximate cost based on uh, past adventures by Disney. These are not exact. You could also go back and listen to our recap from our 2019. So if you're wondering what this includes in addition to what you see on the printed itinerary here, we really talk about it in depth. And again, there is a form here, again, understanding that you do sort of get first crack when these dates are released, and then you'll be assigned a Mouse Fan Travel Advisor if you don't have one, and then you'll be able to hopefully join us uh, in 2025. Uh, this is the trip that I have been looking forward to, that I have been waiting for since 2019. Um, Tokyo is a special, uh, sorry, Japan is a special, special place. Kyoto is my favorite city, not even a city, my favorite town my favorite village, um, probably anywhere on earth. I love America, right? But Kyoto is is a, I could spend the week, I could spend all nine days in, in so Becky says 20, 84 minutes. Um, so, um, and again, we don't have dates yet. I understand that there's going to be no date that is going to be ideal for everyone. Uh, but if you are interested, and this is not, if you know me, you know I'm not a salesperson. I will tell you, if you're even remotely thinking about it, put your name on the interest list. Uh, this went live yesterday afternoon, and and I'm blown away by the number of people that submitted an interest list form. I know, obviously, everyone is not gonna, going to book, but they will sort of get priority preference based on where you are on that list. So if you're interested, go to www.com slash Japan 25 and without question, uh, put your name on the list. And if you have any questions, ask your mouse fan travel advisor. You can post those questions in here um, and I'll try, we'll try and answer them for you. Becky is obviously here. Uh, Carol, it is in fact a, a trip of a lifetime. There, It is I, I have been fortunate to see and visit some amazing places in my life, uh, both growing up with my family, uh, traveling for work. I've been to the Philippines. We went on an ABD to China. We just came back from Italy and, and domestically. Japan is a special place. It is an absolutely special place. Um, and yes, I, I did see um, uh, somebody, I think there was somebody in the chat and then I got an email. But there's some of the things... I think there's sometimes confusion about the Adventures by Disney. When you do an Adventures by Disney, for the most part, when you go to a destination like a, a Japan, like a Tokyo, like a Shanghai, if you go to Hong Kong, etc., the Adventures by Disney is about the destination. It is about being truly immersed in the culture and the experiences in a way that, I don't want to say you can't do it anywhere else, but but... In a, in a very special way, including opportunities that, yes, you might not get anywhere else. For example, when we went to Italy um, last year, it was last, it was last year. When we went to Italy last year, uh, if you were to, to go to the Vatican, you and 
Tens of thousands of your closest friends are going to be trying to get into the Vatican all at the same time. It is very claustrophobic. It is um, it is a very, very long wait, and you're sort of like hustled through a lot of areas. When you go on Adventures by Disney and you visit the Vatican, you go after the Vatican closes. And for us, there were 30 of us in our WW Radio group with a local guide and somebody from the Vatican And it was just us. And I will tell you that I was not the only person that was moved to tears, not just by being in that place and speak, being in the Sistine Chapel and it's dead quiet. And there's your incredibly knowledgeable guide who's from Italy, who is giving you details and stories that you just, you can't get out of a book. You, You can't get out by trying to read a guide yourself or even having like a recorded audio guide. It was a life. I mean, it's, I know it sounds silly. And when we do things like London, Paris, like we're going to have those similar experiences. We had things like that in China. We're going to have similar things when we go to Japan. Um, there were, there were moments in our Japan trip in 2019 that I will never, ever forget. And it's not just, the big moments. It's not just going to the big wow places and the destinations that you need to sort of check off your, your list as a tourist. It's, it's the small, it's the small ones. It's the small, intimate, personal experiences with not actors, not guides, not, but with like real people that live in these places. Like, I mean, we've talked about it on the show, so it's not like going into someone's home and learning about day-to-day life in, you know, the place that they live, going into this tiny little tea house and it's just us. They close the entire restaurant down and it's just us. And the owner comes out. She's the owner. She's the chef. She's the witch. She's all these things. And you have this remarkable, intimate experience that you just couldn't get anywhere else. There are moments like that that I'm like, this is why you do ABD. This is why we take an Adventures by Disney. This is why we do it together. You know, we sort of buy out the group and we do it together as a family. And Because even though <clears throat> you might not know anybody or everybody, when you walk into the group, you know you have something in common. And it's not me, right? It's, it's the clubhouse. It's the family. And the relationships and the friendships that form. I know that there's folks who are in here who have been on adventures before, made friends with people they made on the adventure and continue to adventure together, even not on Adventures by Disney. And that's that's sort of what makes these trips special. I could not have imagined going to someplace like China, certainly alone, certainly not through Adventures by Disney, because you're also sort of insulated in this wonderful Disney bubble, not just of safety and security, but the types of experiences that you have. And having not just the local guides, but a Disney guide, in our case, two Disney guides with us, um, it adds a whole different layer to the experience that literally you cannot get anywhere else. And I still, excuse me, I'm still in contact with the guides. One of the guides that we had from uh, our Japan trip in 2019, she and I message each other all the time. Like, I can't wait to go back and hopefully be able to see her if she's not going to be our local guide when we get there. And even the the adventures guides uh, themselves, like you develop friendships and relationships with them. Um, it's just, um, it's amazing. So Becky said, if I could post a link to the recap show. Yeah, so I did. If you go to www.com slash Japan 25, there is a link to the player right there where you can listen to show 568. That's part one of our Adventures by Disney recap. So it's, uh, here, wait www.radio.com slash 568. Um, there you go. You should, I know you can't actually click on the link. Well, maybe you can click on the link. No, I can't. Um, I know YouTube has its pros and cons. We're working through that. We're figuring this all out. We're going to figure out what the perfect solution is. It's why this is called the explain, uh, the, <laughs> the, the uh, experiment. Uh, Lewis secretly told me that he will dress up as the Pope and walk through the Vatican dresses. Uh, I would never do that because I am pretty sure that anything that I may have earned in my past five plus decades <coughs> to try and get me into heaven would be wiped out. Um, 
There's only one Pope, sir, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like this. So, um, yeah, Bo Ventures, it, it is an incredible, it is, the, the, I don't like to call it a product, but the Adventures by Disney product, and I understand it, it comes at, at a cost, and there's, there's sometimes some sticker shot. I, I will tell you, I've never heard anybody come from an Adventures by Disney and not say, not only did you not get my money's worth, but you get so much more than that. And there's a lot of things that we don't talk about because we want the element of surprise that you get. Uh, we even saw it when we just went to Wyoming this past year. I told my family and I told some friends that were coming on nothing about it. And I didn't know a lot. And every day there's like a different surprise and they're like, this is it. Like, this is, is why. And it's not just the things that you read on the itinerary. It's the things that you don't. And that is like, that's where... It just excels. Um, and yes, there is going to be an option to do an add-on at Tokyo. Oh, that's right. That's where I started this whole conversation. You, there is going to be an option to, to add on Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea if you want to, because the adventures by Disney themselves are not about the Disney parks, unless you take an adventures by Disney that takes you to the Disney parks. This is about the culture. It's about the people. It's about the history. It's about the experience. It's about the food that you can't do anywhere else. It is not about going to the parks. Um, but I absolutely recommend as long as you're on that side of the planet stay a few days later go to tokyo disneyland and go to tokyo disney sea um because it's it's you know my love of of tokyo disneyland and disney sea goes very very far very very wide and, and very very deep so let me get rid of that up there um caleb says life life is a journey enjoy the trip i agree um wholeheartedly so so Karen says you're a definite candidate for, he for heaven thank you very much from your lips to God's ears but Amber Breads he is but he has to release the grease tape in order to pass the gate uh, listen when I'm gone whatever happens with the grease tape happens knock yourselves out although I do plan on bringing it to the grave with me <laughs> like that's last thing you're going to see is me with my arms with my arms crossed um, with a rosary in one hand and the grease tape Locked. It's going to be like when Indiana Jones opened up the the temple of uh, the Knights Templar Knight and sort of was pulling it. That's what it's going to be like for me. Uh, CBU girl, CBU. What does CBU stand for, girl? Uh, did the ABD SoCal Escape last year and was amazing. It was my first, and I loved it. It's easy to get addicted, CBU girl, to Adventures by Disney, isn't it? Uh, because you know the type of product that it delivers. And we've already been talking about future adventures by Disney that may or may not include, this is where Becky gets nervous, but we've talked about this before, that may or may not include a visit to the pyramids. So, and when I say pyramids, I don't just mean the ones in Egypt. This is also news to Becky, because I just, like, I want to visit the South American, like the Mesoamerican pyramids as well. I won't even get into my discussion about the aliens, but... Um, Your application for an extra on the series, The Chosen, has been approved. You're going to be a bard. I don't even know what The Chosen is. I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I, I don't get to watch, nor do I. Like, I just don't choose to watch a lot of TV. I, I had a conversation with somebody the other day. I have not watched anything on broadcast television. Like, I have YouTube TV just for the football package. I have not watched anything on broadcast. I mean, the, the Oscars was on the other night, but that doesn't count. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know when. The only thing I'm trying to watch now, and I just... I haven't had time is Shogun um, on Hulu. <coughs> I almost was going to do a nation watch party because it's on Hulu, but I think it's a little bit sort of too many levels removed. I watched the first episode and as somebody who loves and appreciates Japanese history and culture, it is, it is spectacularly beautiful um, show. And I just, and, and I, if you have any interest in Japanese history and history and culture, um, and it's it's incredibly well acted as well. Excuse me. And and if you like me love Lost, there is an actor from Lost who was on Shogun. See if you can pick it out. See if you can pick it out. So uh, Jen says Shogun is so good. It, it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, Jim O'Neill is waiting for backstage magic. I think Becky, didn't they rename Backstage Magic to like the Southern California something, something? 
We've done it twice. We were going to do it again until they removed some elements from it. But Jim, I believe those elements are back in. Becky can confirm or deny that. We've talked about doing that again um, in conjunction with a visit to Disneyland. So if, if you're interested in doing backstage magic, stay tuned. So, and yes, Drew Pike, Mayan temples. Um, I'm not saying it's aliens, but you know, um, Kenneth Pucci at the river cruise was spectacular. We're going to do, I'm not saying summer on the Sen, but I might be saying summer on the Sen. So, uh, you take Shogun is awesome. Don't spoil it for, did you watch the Richard Chamberlain version in, God, it was 79, 81, 82, somewhere around there. I actually still have it in an unopened DVD, but I remember watching that as a kid and I loved it. So I want to watch this and then I want to go back and um, I want to go back and watch the, the original again. So, but don't spoil. I have not caught up in, um, I have not caught up on the current. So again, if you are interested in our trip to Japan, uh, you can learn more by going to www.com slash Japan 25 and bring your stretchy pants. Bring your stretchy pants. So I can't wait. I can't wait. That is the, um, I know we have a lot coming up before that, but that's the one I'm with. Speaking of coming up before that, and I don't have any sort of graphic associated with this, um, who's going to D23, the ultimate Disney, wait, what do they call it? The ultimate Disney fan experience. It's D23 Expo. Let's call it what it is. Who's going to D23 Expo? Uh, We're going to be there again. WW Radio, Mouse Fan Travel, coming together again on the show floor. Uh, we have it locked in. We are locked up and ready to go. This summer, uh, more details to follow. But who has been before and who is um, who is going this summer to the ultimate it, D23, the ultimate fan experience in Anaheim, California. Um, Jen says, summer on the set, I can pi- finally put my Duolingo French to you. By the way, if you've never done Duolingo, it's free, by the way. You can take advantage of, of most of what it offers for free. It's a very smart, very easy, like bite-sized lessons, ways to learn a language. I may or may not have Japanese on my Duolingo. So, (coughs) excuse me. Becky, how are you going to use, make your outtakes of Lou Mangiello now that TikTok is banned? I don't even want to go down that, um, that road. Beatrice has been, Caleb Joshua Hill is planning to go for his first time ever. <clears throat> um, to quote um, one Mr. Ferris Bueller, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. It is so choice. I love Expo. I'm going to keep calling it Expo. I love Expo. Um, it is such, there's so much going on, but if you are a Disney fan <coughs> and wherever your fandom lies, I promise you there's something at Expo um, for you. And if you're thinking about it, if you're looking forward to going, if you want to try and see about hotels and things like that, don't do it on your own. Go to mousefantravel.com. It's what they do. It's what they live for to help folks like you get to Expo, get to Disneyland, come out to Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, all that kind of... Wait, speaking of those things, by the way, if you haven't gotten a quote yet for our Halloween on the High Seas this October... Yes, we are going to look out key at Lighthouse Point. We're going October 21st through the 26th. Yes, we're going to have a costume contest or and or come with us on the Disney Treasure February 8th through the 15th, 2025. It also happens to be our 20th anniversary. So there's going to be a lot to celebrate there. If you go to www.com slash cruise, you can learn more and get a free, free, zero obligation quote from our friends over at Mouse Fan Travel. There's a, we have a lot coming up. We have a lot of good stuff coming up, um, including a lot of things that we just were not quite ready to share just yet. So, and I probably, uh, let's see. No, I don't have a, 
Do I have a graphic ready? Well, we'll use this one instead. Uh, also, by the way, if you're going to be in World this weekend, our meet of the month is going to be, whoops, there you go, this Saturday in the aforementioned Epcot Center. I know. It's in the middle of the day. It's in the middle of spring break, but it's also in the middle of Flower and Garden Festival. So um, that one just cancels out the others. So we'll meet in the heat. Maybe we'll go eat and we'll have some fun this weekend. So let me uh, let me know. Uh, is there a 5K at Lighthouse Point? I mean, I don't know why that's the first thing you think of, Drew, but you go do you. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they, they'll have some sort of <clears throat> 5K event. If not, I'm sure you and those like you that enjoy that running silliness uh, can do a 5K on your own. That's what's happened before. Um, we, we've, I think, I think there was a little bit of time when they didn't do the 5K post COVID, and then we did a cruise, and I think some of the runners just sort of made their own 5K and um, did it that way. But I, I would be shocked if they, if they didn't. So. Beach of Sands has a 1,200 Duolingo day streak. Holy, get, wait a minute. That's like 365, four, carry one. That's like four years, five years. That I'm assuming you, are you learning German? Is that what you're, um, that's wild. Yikes. So, uh, has anyone been to Curacao and have excursion recommendations? Uh, I have not. I have not, Beth, but we can add it to the list. So we've talked about some of the places that we want to go, um, certainly as a group. And there's a few that are on the whiteboard up there <clears throat> that are on the phone here that we'll get to. We'll absolutely get to. So, um, but does anybody else have any questions <clears throat> either about uh, our Japan, ABD, anything that you want me to, to uh, review? This week or this weekend at Flower and Garden Festival, as well as um, any feedback about the YouTube experience. I did see some folks in the clubhouse today. I know that there's elements of this, which is why it's an experiment that are not ideal. Um, the ability or inability to tag um, the fact, you know, it's not connected to sort of the, the Facebook group experience, but overall... I'd love to know your thoughts on video quality, audio quality, the interactivity, the, the chat functionality, the notifications, which, you know, unfortunately right now, <clears throat> notifications, it, it's, they're non-existent. It's an absolute crapshoot on Facebook. I am not alone on this. I've talked to some other folks in, in other groups and, and group administrators and some folks that have worked for Facebook, and it's, it's absolutely an issue. Um, I know that there's a huge migration of people off of Facebook for one reason or another. Um, but I think that these two can sort of work in concert if we're finding that this is a little bit of a um, of a better experience. So kind of says YouTube is the way to go. Uh, how much more does staying for the parks in Japan add to the trip? Uh, Kelly, it, um, I have to give you the, the answer and Becky can sort of talk to you offline about this, is it depends. Right. It obviously depends on where you want to stay. You know, if you stay at the Hotel Miracosta, it's very different than staying at the Disneyland Hotel, you know, the Hilton or one of the other hotels in the outlying area. The type of pass that you get, how many days you're going to go for, et cetera. But reach out to Becky and she'll be able to uh, help you with more specifics offline as well. Uh, did we read that the Japan Tour Troop will see a sumo wrestling demo? This won't be one of those group participations. So, Mark, uh, yes. Uh, we did do the group. Uh, so the sumo experience was wonderful because you go to this, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but you go to this tiny little village and you go to this very intimate sumo arena, for lack of a better word, but it, it's very small. And you do see a sumo wrestling demonstration. You do not participate in said demonstration, nor do you have to wear the sumo attire, if that's where you're going. Um, but yes, you do um, you do get to do it. Uh, there is a scavenger hunt at Flower and Garden this year. It is, forgive me that I don't know offhand what it's called, but I will look. It is called the, there's two. There's Spike's Pollination Exploration, 
Uh, gardeners of all ages could follow Spike in his pollination trail. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, he will be <clears throat> busy collecting nectar and pollinating gardens. Epcot, and there's a limited time uh, Easter egg egg extravaganza scavenger hunt inspired by Disney cast member uh, inspired by Disney characters. See a cast member for details. So, uh, let's see. The only question I have about Japan is how to pay for it. Um, can someone throw out a Japan dollar figure with two adults? It will help on my decision. So, so uh, Drew, on the 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 if you go to www.com slash Japan twenty five, we do have an approximation based on last year's numbers, um, and that that's all really have we have to go from right now because we don't have the twenty twenty five numbers dates specific specifics as yet. Uh, in the past, you know, it, it has ranged between 12 to 13 per person, double occupancy, um, those rates. I, I promise you, right, and and I mean, I only have my own personal experience to, um, to draw from. For the 10 nights that you are there, you can't put a price on, on what you get. Um, and I, I understand it's not accessible for everybody and I and I completely understand that but um, I have never been disappointed with what the cost of an adventure by Disney has been so um, the biggest issue with YouTube is closed captioning they work in the replay but not when you're live um, Katrina I will look into that I will look into that because I believe that I've seen um, I'm I'm Looking now, it says closed captioning and subtitles unavailable. Let me see what I can find out. Let me do a, uh, let me make myself a note because this is all super helpful for me. And let me see what I can find out. Um, let's see. Uh, video and audio quality are better on YouTube. I've absolutely seen that. Uh, I did do a test a week or two ago. I brought two phones with me um, and I hopped on to Disney's Wi-Fi. I was not like a crazy spring break day. And I went live on a secret YouTube page. I went live on a secret Facebook group. And, and I don't know why. Not only would, would the Facebook drop off more, but the video quality was like exponentially worse. And it's it's it was very laggy. It was very jaggedy. Um, so... I don't think that live is is a is a priority for Facebook anymore. And I think that's unfortunately reflected on um, the algorithm, which used to promote live video. There were times, and again, I'm not a numbers guy, but there were times that the numbers were on a different stratus because of the way Facebook determines who they're going to show what to. They have completely done a 180 on that. And live is, is not promoted heavily at all. And I've had people say, I turn on notifications, I go to the clubhouse and I have to try and search down all the posts to try and find it. Like it's an effort to try and find what, and it shouldn't be. And I've looked at their phones and like, look, I have all the notifications turned on. I have everything turned on and I don't get notifications at all. Sometimes I get it two hours after the show is over that Lou Mangello was live. I'm like, well, that does nobody any good. So, um, let's see. Let me just see some of your other. So Karen says she has the live closed captions. Are you watching on, let me see if I can, I also have it on my phone just because I'm trying to get a full, <coughs> excuse me, sense of the experience as well. Um, I like the quality of YouTube more. I've definitely seen that as well. No wonky delays. Um, I generally watch on my phone. I've tried iPhone closed captioning and so far off of what said it's crazy. Yeah, you have to actually do it from YouTube. Not So Karen might be doing that too. She might be doing the closed captioning from her phone. Um, but Maureen says I like being able to watch on the TV. I've, I've heard that a lot. People will put it up on their TV. They'll watch again on their phone so they can chat from their phone, but then just have the video up on the TV. You know, don't you hate it when you have a York peppermint patty 
in your pocket all day because you planned on, on eating it around lunchtime and you forgot and now it's 8.30 and it's just a little, it's a little, it's not even a York Easter egg peppermint patty anymore. It's just this bad mush of sadness. But that's just God saying, you know what, Mangello, maybe lay off the peppermint patties. But it's a superfood because it's dark chocolate, which is good for you, and peppermint, which is actually good for uh, cognitive mental stability and sinuses. <clears throat> I'm a doctor. Um, same time with notifications. Um, YouTube pros, great pick and audio. I can see Lou's big, fat, full head in 1 billion K quality. Thank you. I don't think. Um, This is a solid way of communicating everyone, Lou. Solid quality, but darn, you have a lot hanging on that wall. Uh, Joe, this is actually a, a and it, it's funny you say that because I've been, I actually took a photo the other day and I was crossing off stuff that I wanted to go off. At one point it was even, there was more, but some things I get like as gifts and I want to make sure I put them up because I'm, I'm grateful. Like, like, like gift, 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 gift. So a lot of the stuff there, and I have stuff, I mean, I can't turn the camera, but there's stuff that way too. But I did want to go, I'm, I'm preparing to do another sort of spring cathartic cleaning of the room and what's in the room as well and go with a little bit more of a minimalist type of look. So who knows how long that will be there for. So uh, my leftover carrot cake cookie from the Grand Floridian, Jen, was spectacular. I did exactly what I said. I gave up coffee for Lent, so I had it with, a, I had a little bit the next morning with a cup of Earl Grey tea. Oh, it was very, very nice. It was a nice, nice way to start the day. So, Chauncey Friend, good seeing you, brother, a long time. Put the peppermint patty in the freezer. I know, but now it's just, it's now, and now that I'm doing this to it, it's just, it's a complete and utter mush. So this is, um, man down, man down for this peppermint patty, so. There's more downstairs. I buy them by the bag. It's fine. I buy the family size pack because I'm doing it for the children. I mean, I don't know whose children, but put the patty in the fridge. It's a, I'm afraid that it's just, it's beyond repair at this point. So I will, um, I'll give it up for the souls in purgatory. So is it time for Lou Roadshow auctions? I just did, <clears throat> I just did a few more auctions a few weeks ago and I actually have, you can't see them, but on my little bench right there, I have a few more items. I have a few more items for auction. I have a few more items for giveaway. I think maybe I'll bring these two. Maybe I'll bring those to the meet of the month on Saturday and give them away to somebody who comes to the meet of the month. Yeah, I'll do like the first person that could show me blank will get that. I have to write that down too. Meet of the month. Again, it's assuming anybody comes to the meet of the month, but if anybody shows up, maybe that's what I will do. So put it in hot chocolate. Beth, it's it's 117 degrees outside, and that's only a slight exaggeration. Spring, we've just bypassed spring here in Florida. It's like 60 degrees in the morning. It was 87 degrees this afternoon because <laughs> peppermint splatty. Nice. Very, very nice. So, anywho. Well, that uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight's show. I appreciate you very, very much for being here. Please don't forget about our Adventures by Disney to Japan. If you have any interest, again, there's no commitment there's no deposit, there's no nothing, but hop on the interest list because it is already very, very long. Don't forget about our cruises coming up in October and in, <coughs> excuse me, in February. <coughs> Sorry. And whether you're coming to World Land, Adventures by Disney, Aulani, wherever, or even non-Disney destinations, yes, I'm sure Becky will be the first one to tell you, they do do, do do, they do do non-Disney destinations um, as well. What else am I forgetting? I know I'm forgetting something else. 
Um, hmm, what am I forgetting? I don't know. I'm sure there's more, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure there's more that, um, that I forgot. If there's something that you'd like to hear, <clears throat> excuse me, or see on the show, please let me know. Uh, huge thanks again to everybody who is part of the WWE Nation family. Uh, none of this is, it can happen without your friendship and your love and support. And if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't come over to Facebook and join the community in the clubhouse, come and be part of it and be part of the conversation as well. Um, what else? I'm sure I'm missing something else. I don't know what it is, um, and it doesn't really matter. Stay tuned. I might be live from Epcot tomorrow. If there's something that you want me to, to review, somebody maybe post that in the clubhouse, and I'll take a look and try and review or cover something for you tomorrow. Please, always, there it is, choose the good, be the good, set an example for others, and create a positive ripple of positivity. Um, and what you do and the things that you say. Uh, I promise you can make the world a better place. One person, one day, one act at a time. Uh, I, lo I don't think this actually does anything with gestures. I love you. I appreciate you so very much. Um, I'm grateful every day for your friendship and the life that you have blessed me with. So I hope that you have a wonderful night, wonderful week. Stay tuned. Make sure you check out the show that dropped today. If you dig it, please share it and uh, invite people. Please like and subscribe and click the bells and do all those things and invite people uh, over here to YouTube as well. So until next time, see ya.